Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. Today we are talking about time for a clean slate and what better time to start anew than in Ramadan. Don't forget this is a live chat so do call in with your questions and comments. The number to call is on your screen now or you can tweet us at Islam channel hashtag WAM15. So Yasmin I'm going to come to you before the break Nazi was talking to us about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using the example of um, Iblis and Adam Ali Salem. Um, but I think um, when we look at uh, you know our ability to kind of commit sin and our, our ability to kind of fall into these bad ways sometimes we we do worry are we still going to be forgiven yeah I mean we're human beings you know we're not perfect beings we weren't born uh, perfect because we do sin um, and sometimes we do go back to the old ways sometimes we do learn from our mistakes but um, during the holy month on the one hand we should remember that we should be on the straight path surround, surround ourselves with people who do good and who don't do bad but you need to look at the other side on the flip side you've got um, the responsibility that you have as a Muslim within your community you should be a good role model and um, with regards to forgiveness Allah would forgive you regardless of which sin you commit um, yeah. except for shirk so if you do compare um, any gods or anyone with Allah that's a, a huge sin in Islam but you can again ask for forgiveness and forgiveness is a crucial concept in Islam um, and in Surah An-Nisa Allah says and whoever does a wrong or wrongs himself but then seeks forgiveness from Allah he will find Allah forgiving and merciful and Al-Bukhari narrated from Abu Huraira um, that the Prophet said his Lord said whenever a sin was committed and then the individual repents oh Allah forgive my sin then Allah replied my slave has committed sin but he knows that he has a Lord who forgives sin and takes away sin so essentially if you fall back into your old ways and this is what we call persisting sin if you are persistent in sin but then you recognize that sin and then you repent and you ask for forgiveness Allah would forgive you yeah yeah and obviously we're talking about you know sincere repentance yeah. not sinning because yeah. we expect Allah to be forgiving it's, it's you know it has to have that sincerity um, sister Nazia have you got anything to add to, to this uh, with a, someone who persistently goes back to something yes of course inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you when you re, you know when you repent yeah. but it's also very important because you don't want to get into the cycle yeah. um, so it's really important that you contemplate why are you doing what you were doing yeah is it the case that you it's out of ignorance or lack of knowledge is it the case it's the bad, bad company that you keep so it's really important because the point is we have an obligation it's a serious thing part of repentance the conditions of it is having sincerity and reflecting this yeah there's yeah, conditions yeah. attached to that and you have to fulfill that one of which is that you you mustn't go back to what you were doing yeah. so in order to make sure that doesn't happen all of those things that I just mentioned you need to address that yeah. and it's very important you do that because ultimately at the end of the day you want to succeed you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forg uh, forgiveness and you should do it properly you should do it the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to Absolutely. do but if you do slip back yes inshallah if you repent and you must repent yeah. you keep uh, you know you do your level best yeah yeah, yeah. and you will inshallah find the forgiveness of Allah basically the more you struggle the more there's reward in it yeah. um, you know uh, the fact that it, it Allah doesn't look at how many times you're falling but how many times are you returning back to him yeah. you know and that's the beauty of um, Allah so you know if we didn't sin then we wouldn't engage in Tawbah we wouldn't be having a conversation with Allah so yeah. think of it like this that you know it's always in the times of struggle and hardship that we're always turning to Allah yeah. Yeah. you know we're raising our hands and seeking like for his help but in during during ease it's always you know we're happy-go-lucky we just don't really turn to Allah and Allah wants you to engage Absolutely. in him Absolutely. so you know this is the best time to start engaging with Allah and make Allah your closest friend because yeah. when you love someone you don't want to hurt them yes and yeah. then that way that you will actually be very conscious of like who you're hurting yeah. although Allah you can't physically see him but you know that the love in his your heart yeah. is attached to him and yeah. you don't and you want can, to do we anything. can get this closeness to Allah and this yes. is one of the benefits of, of investing in that relationship isn't it that yeah. that we're, we're going to be more conscious of, of, of you know our sinning and our repentance mm -hmm. and that kind of thing um, but I think another thing that we hear a lot is that uh, you know I think uh, sister Yasmin mentioned this we're imperfect beings yes. you know we, we do sin and we are going to sin again mm -hmm. and again so what is the point in cleaning our slate if, if you know we're kind of expecting it to happen all over again uh, sister Nazia well it's, it's sometimes you know, sometimes we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we turn away, sometimes we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we, we forget that He's watching us yeah. or, and we become negligent about these kind of things. So 
when these things happen, ultimately it's going to lead us to making mistakes. Um, none of us is free of sin. Allah SWT has created us imperfect. Um, we're not infallible. Hence, this is what the Prophet said about this. Um, by the one who, in whose hand is my soul, if you do not commit sin, Allah would do away with you and bring people who would commit sin, then pray for forgiveness. He also said in another narration, every son of Adam sins and the best of those who sin are those who repent. Um, so it clearly says we inevitably will make mis uh, you know commit sins and make mistakes but you know it's so interesting because when you read that it's, it's strange isn't it to hear that but why why are we doing this why surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would would turn away from us but actually you know what what we're told about this is that the most noble um, Ibn Qayyum he discusses the benefits of repentance and what he says is that he describes how repentance is the most noble and beloved um, form of servitude in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he said is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, loves those he actually loves those who repent why is that because he has this love he has this love for his creation mm -hmm. and he tests them with he t actually tests them with sins why does he do this so that when they repent he is now able to shower his blessings and mercy upon them so that just shows you that you know at the end of the day if he wanted to create he's got angels they worship yeah. him 20 or, you know all the time yeah. and they do this um, without any question but he created us with free will so when you make a mistake and then you do not repent. That's a huge kind of thing that you've done, you've lost out on. Yeah. Yeah. We've been given free will. So when we turn around and we acknowledge we made a mistake, sincerely regret that we've done this, but then we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for his forgiveness, that is a huge thing. And it is that attribute that he loves about us that you know yeah absolutely ultimately. some fantastic reminders there about forgiveness and how important it is um, but one practical thing I want to think about is you know come sort of day 15 the fatigue of Ramadan the tiredness you know it does really set in so how can we keep ourselves motivated um, sister Yasmin I'm going to come to you first yeah, with that just a yeah. quick comment from you we have two obstacles here um, two types of obstacles we've got the internal um, challenge <coughs> and then we've got the external the external is usually timekeeping you might waste your time you might um, you've got work work time related issues yeah. And the way to avoid that is to look at the concepts that Islam has equipped us with, such as patience and faith, mm -hmm. and keeping us motivated to carry on. Because just like athletes, you know, to sprint, it takes them years to prepare for that That's sprint. That's absolutely true, and I think Ramadan yeah. is certainly a test of endurance, and patience and faith are really absolutely. good, um, yeah. you know, tools to help us get through it. And Sister Aisha, a very quick last take-home message from you think about, about getting through. The yeah, month. think about how you're filling up your tummy. You know, if we, we're not uh, we're abstaining from food, so think about making your tummy filled with dhikr, You know, planning like how yeah. you're going to um, uh, use utilize Ramadan. We, we worship Allah. We don't worship like you know emotion. So, you know, we are going to be low, but keep pushing yourself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Keep pushing yourself for the sake of Allah. Um, and Sister Nazia, very quick final tip from you about getting through the, the, the um, end difficult days. I think days. we mustn't focus on this whole issue of the long days. Be yeah. aware of the fact that the people, the pious predecessors of the past, they used to search for the long days mm -hmm. of fasting. Yeah. yeah. So really take advantage of it. Don't fear it. Make lots of dua. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you ask to make it easy, he will make it easy. If you ask me to make the thirst go away, he will make the thirst go away. It's it's your mindset, yeah? yeah. So we should embrace the long fast. They're an amazing opportunity before yeah, us. Yeah, there's a lot of baraka in the long yeah. days. And I think um, one thing I always find is that the, these kind of days leading up to Ramadan, we have the anxiety about how difficult it's going to be. But then alhamdulillah, as you say, it's, um, it's always easier than we think. So some fantastic reminders. Thank you very much to everyone on the panel. As Ramadan draws to a close, remember to do your best to maintain the goodness of Ramadan. As I and narrated the Prophet peace be upon him said the deeds most loved by Allah are those done regularly even if they are small and that's recorded by Bukhari and Muslim so consistency is the key here my dear sisters so let's do our best to instill regular good actions in our lives in any small way and inshallah they'll grow into small deeds and regular habits some great reminders and I hope some tips to benefit us all over the next 30 days inshallah but if you missed any of today's show all is not lost you can catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And of course, you can catch the highlight show from all of this week on Sunday at 3 p.m. We're now off to another break, but do stay tuned as we'll be back with our last segment where we'll be joined by Sister Arthur Iqbal to answer questions on attraction and looks as part of our marriage series. So please do call or tweet with your questions. But before we do, the Wham Challenge is upon us finally. So what is it all about? Let's find out.